Hello ladies, it's Mr. Arcel, and today we are having a Zoom lesson. This is lesson 1-8A. I forgot to put the A in, let me put it in now. And we are going to be looking at solving linear inequalities. So we're going to basically hold off on the solving for today. We'll be doing the solving tomorrow, but we're going to be looking at our solutions and how to actually draw our solution on a number line. So today's learning target is I can solve an inequality by using the properties to solve an equation. So it's very much similar to how we solve an equation, except we're not going to be seeing the equal sign. We're going to be seeing these things right here called inequalities, symbols. So whenever you see this, you have the less than, and whenever you put it on a number line, you will put an open circle. Here is your greater than, and you'll still use an open circle. Here is less than or equal to, you'll use a closed circle. And here's greater than or equal to, and you will use a closed circle again. Interval notation is something that you'll be seeing pop up in our class, not frequently, but it will pop up. And that's simply when you use parentheses in either direction or brackets in either direction or a combination of the both. So you can have this or you can have this. And it's just ways to represent your solution. And we'll be going over those as we progress through the examples. When you have a parenthesis, that means you do not include in your solution. It will not be a part of your solution. This will use the less than or greater sign, and it will be an open circle. When you have your bracket, it means do include. So it actually is a part of your solution, and you will use less than or equal or greater than or equal, and it will be a closed circle on your number line. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on graphing inequalities on our number line using the open circle or closed circle. And we're going to also put it in interval notation. So for our first example, we have c is greater than negative 2. We first want to graph this on the number line. So when we have c greater than negative 2, we simply just put a negative 2 right on our number line. We don't need to put multiple numbers. And we want numbers that are larger than negative 2. So one of the things the student told me last year was, well, if you're writing it as c ne greater than negative 2, you want to shade in this direction. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to shade in the, to the right just like this. And since it's greater than, we're going to put an open circle around our negative 2. That's how you would simply graph this on a number line. To do interval notation, since you're starting at negative 2, you're going to put your negative 2. But since it's not including negative 2 as your solution, we put a parenthesis. And it's going on forever and ever and ever to the right. So we do an infinity. That means it basically goes on forever and ever and ever. Whenever you have an infinity, it's automatically a parenthesis. Now, our next example, saying 4 is less than or equal to m. What that means is the same thing as writing m greater than or equal to 4. So I want all the values of m that are greater than or equal to 4. So I'm going to still put my 4 in. It's greater than or equal to, so I'm going to shade to the right. And it's a closed circle because it's greater than or equal to. Now I need to put it in interval notation. So when I put it in interval notation, I simply have my 4 with my bracket because it's always with a bracket when it's greater than or equal, less than or equal to. And it's going on forever and ever and ever to the right. So I do my infinity. But like I said before, we do a parenthesis for infinity always. Try to do the next one by yourself. For x is greater than or equal to negative 3, you should have plotted negative 3 on your number line and shade it to the right because you want all the values of x that are larger than negative 3 and equal to it. We do a closed circle because it's greater than or equal to. And now, since we're always going on forever and ever and ever to the right, we do our infinity. So it's going to be the bracket, negative 3, to infinity. Now we're going to be going backwards. So I'm giving you your number line, and I want you to write it in inequality and interval notation. So for our first example, we have the negative 4. So I know that I need to write a negative 4 in my solution. So I'm going to put my negative 4. But now I need to ask myself, am I going to the left of negative 4 or to the right of negative 4? Well, I'm going to the left, and I'm including the values of negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and so forth. So I'm saying that x has to be less than or equal to negative 4. And I know it's less than or equal because look, it's going in this direction. 
The reason why it's less than or equal to is because it's a closed circle. Now, with interval notation, we haven't seen this before, but we're really doing negative infinity. So we're going from negative infinity all the way to negative four, and that's gonna have a bracket because of the closed circle. Now, again, we go to the left. It's an open circle, so we're gonna just say x is less than five. Again, since we're including all the values of x that are smaller than five, we're gonna do a negative infinity. Ooh, that didn't look like a negative infinity. A little better. And we're gonna do a five. We now need to ask ourselves, is it a parenthesis or a bracket? Well, it's a parenthesis because we are not including five in our solution. So we were basically saying all the numbers that are smaller than five are in our solution. Try to do the next example by yourself. When doing this example, we see that we are shading to the right of 1.5. So all of our values of x have to be greater than or equal to 1.5. The reason why we say greater than or equal to is because 1.5 is included in our solution. When we write our answer in interval notation, we simply get 1.5 to infinity with a bracket around our 1.5 and a parenthesis around our infinity. What we're going to do right now is determine if each of the following numbers is a solution to the inequality 2 minus 5x greater than 13. If we look at the model problem for part A, we want to determine if 0 is a solution to 2 minus 5x greater than 13. So what we did was we rewrote our inequality, we plugged in 0, we then did 2 minus 5 times 0 greater than 13, 5 times 0 is 0, so we got 2 minus 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 2 is not bigger than 13, so we would put no, this is not a solution. We're going to follow the exact same setup. We want to figure out if the number negative 4 is a solution. So we always rewrite our inequality. So we're gonna do two minus five x greater than 13. We wanna substitute a negative four in for x. So we're gonna get two minus five times negative four greater than 13. Well, if we type into our calculator, negative five times negative four, we get 20. So we are really dealing with two plus 20 greater than 13. Well, 2 plus 20 is 22, and 22 is greater than 13. So we would say, yes, this is a solution. Try to do the next example by yourself. So at this point, when you do your substitution, you should have gotten 13 is greater than 13. Well, I have to ask you, is 13 larger than 13? And the answer to that question is no, 13 is the exact same as 13. So we would say that no, this is not a solution. So no, not a solution. So here's your next assignment. Your next assignment is if you are struggling to rewatch this video, but to also complete your Delta Math assignment on solving inequalities. If you have any questions, please email myself, Ms. Townsend, or Ms. Jimenez. Have a great day, ladies.